Yo, what's going on boys? Welcome back to the Ultimate RTG and I hope you guys are doing well and your records are great. We're going to be resuming in Foot Champions and I did say though on Friday I had completely lost my head. I was raging, I was screaming and it wasn't a good look and it definitely wasn't helping in any way. So on Saturday before I even stepped on the pitch, I made a conscious effort to relax myself and keep calm. Even if things were going to go against me, I wanted to stay calm and have an open mind. And do you know what? I noticed a difference and it definitely translated into my gameplay and the major improvement that I was working on as well was not to rush my attacks. There's a difference between catching your opponents on counters and forcing the play forward. And how many times have I told you that even when I've been in like a 4-4-2 that I only have two strikers to aim at and I feel very flat and there's no creativity. Well, the issue with that is because as soon as I regain possession, I pick it up with, let's say, a CDM or a center mid, and I just RBA it into my striker's feet without really any thought. I don't even check the minimap to see where they are. I just rush it forward, and most of the time in that play, it gets overturned because the AI on this game is just so overpowering, and they step up in the passing lane. Or I'll take a touch, and then I'm so predictable because I've only got two people to play it between. So what I did is that instead of forcing those attacks, is I was recycling the ball back through the defense, up to the CDMs, back to the defenders, the strikers. And you could say I was playing a little bit more possession base, but my good God, did it help. And what it also allows is the right wing back and left wing back to then push on and get into more of an attacking position. And then your whole team just resets. So instead of getting caught in that transition and your opponent continues to put pressure on you, you then re gain control and you go again so that is definitely something that i would stress for you guys to try and do if you're someone that like me that wants to play quick um, and there's no fault playing fast and, and if you see a counter attack and with how overpowered some of these through balls are that i need to get better with myself like my timing is a little bit off admittedly so i want to try and practice that during the week if you see those through balls take them but if you know that you've only got one or two players up the top just take your time and it definitely helped me out big time now, although I felt like we did keep calm, uh, in one of the games, I lost my head and I got angry again. And it's one of those where I, I don't I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Like, most athletes in the world, they, they get worked up. Like, Djokovic, you know, he shouts at the officials. He's throwing his racket on the ground. Like, there's just passion. But then I guess there is also, like, a fine line between just completely losing my head and then uh, being, like, competitive. It, I don't know, it is, a, it is a problem, but after five minutes, I'm all good again. It's just annoying because it wasn't even anything to do with what my opponent was doing or even the gameplay itself. It was a decision, and I made the mistake, and I was annoyed with myself. And that's something that I, I think I'm fine with admitting, and I'm more than allowed to get annoyed with things that I've, I've done in games. But anyway, the way the match was going is that I was controlling it a little bit. It was either 2-1 or 3-2. And I was in the 90th minute. And instead of just passing the ball out of play, I tried to play it out the back. And I didn't even realize. I was told like it was 90, it was the 91st minute and there was only one minute added on. They would have ended the game. And in the heat of the moment, I didn't see that. And I tried to play it out the back and then I got worked up because I conceded. And we later on, uh, we went later went on to lose on a penalty shootout. So it's just one of those things that the, the loss itself, okay, it was annoying, but it's how we bounced back. And I still kept calm in the remaining games. And our record without spoiling it is looking pretty good. We were eight and two on Friday. And we have made improvements with the way we've approached the game. And we've seen a really nice record really to, um, to end our Saturday run, but there's still a long way to go. Sunday, it's going to be tough and it's going to, well, we're going to have to bring out the best in our ability. Otherwise, we're going to get destroyed. It's, it's not going to be easy at all. It's going to be very, very hard. But what's come out on the game? Uh, team of the season content, we had Zapata. I mean, he's not really the go-to. Unfortunately, right, I would have loved to have tried that Chiesa, but he's not really worth it. I think, if I'm not mistaken, he's coming in at like 240, 250,000, which is kind of ridiculous. So if they could have released him as a tradable card, he would have been no more than, what, like uh, 120, 130? And with uh, the foot birthday cards, by the way, this is why I believe it's the best promo, because I don't know how many, like, attacking wingback options we're going to get from Team of the Season that are going to be better than Furlan Mendy and Sambia because they both provide the five-star skills. I have seen like a few 
weak foot or skill move upgrades with these team of the seasons, but not as big as foot birthday. So that's why I believe they're going to hold their value. And I've just clocked now with the starting 11, we've got four of them in our team. So it just goes to show that they are like pretty decent cards and, and awesome upgrades. And the price that I bought Mendy at, it was like 600. And I think he's like 650 now, uh, maybe a little bit more. And Patrick Vieira has gone up to like 1.5 mil. And we had purchased him for 1,275,000. So it is looking real good. And we're feeling um, much better with our team. And I know some people are looking at the 532 and thinking, oh, Christ, yeah, that is pro proper sweaty. And it is. It is. It's, it's disgusting that the EA have allowed it to get to this point. And it is one of the most, like, balanced and overpowering formations on the game. It is like people were complaining about the 4231, and then they patched that. Then everyone, the thing is with, with the FIFA community is that whatever anybody uses, people will find a way to complain. It's like us complaining about the gameplay all the time. We, we just we just do. We find ways to, to be annoyed about how our opponents are playing or what they're doing and this. Instead of focusing on ourselves, we're always thinking about other people and it's just the way uh, the community works, unfortunately. But I've even said it myself, like I don't particularly like the fact that the 5-3-2 is the go-to. Um, it is just very good. Like there's no other way around it. It's a good formation on the game. The wing back options, the attack through the middle, it's got really everything and it's very strong. And if you're playing an attacking way, you're going to get a lot out of your game. So if you're someone that is not doing as well, maybe look to use the 532 and you'll see improvements uh, for real. But in these games though, the way the players are stepping up and Babu Patrick Vieira had some of the best games that I've actually experienced so far. It just clicked, but I knew. Giving away a free kick here, Lionel Messi, 24 yards out. God damn. Actually, I think this was the game where I believe the guy like tried to quit and be toxic. You know when you're just about to score and your opponent knows that, so they quickly try and dashboard so they don't give you the result. But having a look back at the gameplay, I think he was lagging. He even said that in the messages. So, yeah, no hard feelings like... Obviously, when I see someone quickly quit just as I'm trying to score, it does seem kind of toxic. But hey, maybe, yeah, maybe I was in the wrong. So yeah, fair enough. If he did get a genuine like DC and stuff and lag out, that's unfortunate because that sucks. But yeah, it was that m moment there. And if you see, yeah, his left winger or well, it wouldn't be his left winger. It would be his right back just running off the pitch. So fair enough. Uh, I'll take the win though. And I, I needed that. And our record is 17 and 3, which is pretty decent, honestly. Like... To go 8 and 2 and not looking like too great, and now we're 17 and 3, which all that we've got, what got to do is go 6 and 4, and we've done it. I mean, 6 and 4 seems pretty straightforward, but it's not because we're going to have a plus 15 elo, and the sweats are going to be coming out in full force, and they will get the most out of uh, my ability. We're going to have to, we're going to have to play well. But I did sub on um, Taglifico. Am I saying his name right again? Last season I got it right, now I can't remember how to say it. Well, I brought him on as a centre mid, and he's alright. He's got good aggression and he makes nice tackles and reads the game well, but he's not really a centre mid. That two-star weak foot was a bit of an issue, and one of the games, like, he had a chance to clutch up. It was in the match that I lost on the penalty shootout. He had a really good uh, chance to just seal it, and it was on his weak foot. So we can't, we can't moan at him because he's got a two-star weak foot. But what I will say is, centre mid just doesn't seem to be, um, yeah, the, the, the right move for him. He wants to be played as a left back or a left wing back in his natural uh, position, which is fine. I think he's going to be a pretty decent player. And the links that you get to like Neres and stuff, I think a lot of people will opt in to use that card, which is, which is sweet. And I don't mind him so much. But just the content, I, I hope that we see maybe um, a few more objectives. Uh, who, who do we have? We have Correa. I'm going to do him. He looks pretty good. But yeah, just a little bit more content for Team of the Season would be nice because the recent SBCs have been a little bit underwhelming, honestly. Like, it's a pattern no one is going to use. I don't want him. He's just absolute rubbish. But Atal, my God, man. He's just so good. He really is. And I don't know if you can tell, but with the gameplay, I haven't really been doing too much on the ball. Like, I know, I know myself, like, I have got a problem, like, trying to overwork the play. But ever since they like patched the shooting, I truly believe they've done this. Where whereas like before, I would not even think about it. I'd shoot across goal and it would be going in. Now you see a lot more uh, shots being pulled wide, or the keepers are just warriors and they save everything. So that kind of puts me off. 
And I'm thinking, okay, well, let's go and pass across. Let's literally just pass the ball in the back of the net. But sometimes just taking the easier option and getting the goal is going to help you out. Well, it is because you're going to score. With the ball rolls and stuff, I don't do that enough, actually. When I'm through like 1v1, I need to just start spamming that. Like literally every single attack, as soon as I'm through on goal, ball roll and then hit to the near post. And it's basically, well, not a guarantee, but you're definitely increasing your chances of, of getting those goals. But the last match come up against someone who was using flashback Ronaldo. Like, I definitely wouldn't want to use flashback Ronaldo these days. Oh, okay, he's just going to score. Um, nice. But no, I wouldn't want to use him again. Uh, I remember he was really iffy. First time I, I used him, though, he had some insane record. And then he just went off the boil. Like, regular Ronaldo has still been playing uh, pretty well for me. But Atel, he's just been the star. He really is so fast in the last man. Uh, he's just incredible. But it's in these positions here that I've got to be careful because, again, I've, I've, well, I'm trying to get my uh, opponent caught out with a counter-attack. But I only had, like, two options there, and I'm just so predictable. Whereas if I wait in, in like, a... If I wait for a sort of an attack like this where I've got my right wing back pushing on and he's obviously got to think about that. I'm, I'm recycling as well. I'm going back a little bit, waiting for my play to sort of spread out. And then I've got Ronaldo just keeping it simple. Damn, that was a good tackle. I thought that was a foul at the time, but that Gomez slide challenge was just time to perfection. But we got the result in the end. 3-1, uh, GG. Boys, let's go back to the club. Do you know who I want to try out? Harvey Barnes. When I had used his future star card when he was released, I even said like, God damn, his finishing is mental. The finesse shots, does he even have that trait? No, he doesn't. The finesse shots on the edge of the box and in general, the movement and the finishing that you got from him, he was quality. And even on the ball, I didn't mind that. Now you take a look at this team of the season and he's had a skill move upgrade. He looks absolutely phenomenal. Perfect pace, shooting, literally everything that he offers. I want to try him out. So maybe for next week, uh, or, or we could potentially get lucky. Let's say we get uh, Elite 3 and we clutch up and pull him from the team of the season pack. I think that I would make a, an effort to bring him into the starting 11. He looks unbelievable. And for the price, like uh, 500,000, it's not really too expensive. And it's the same for most of these team of the seasons. They're pretty affordable. And, and you know what we could do, in fact? We could get chemistry with Wambasaka. Somehow, I, I don't know, we would have to start him, uh, I guess we'd play Harvey Barnes as a center mid. Damn, do you know what sucks is that he's a left winger. If he was a central card, it'd be so much easier for chemistry. But anyway, it is what it is. We'll think about doing something like that for next week. wan Harvey Barnes in, possibly. But the stats that we've got uh, with our players... Has Atel come back to a goal a game yet? No. But that doesn't make any difference because I still feel like I'm scoring a ton of goals. But these two have been incredible signings, really. Sambi I packed, and he's been quality. And Mendy is just super, super OP. I love this team. I really do. And if I'm playing properly and keeping calm, like it is a team that is more than capable of getting some of the best results in foot champions or just in general on the game. But that is really key, is keeping controlled and keeping calm. It's tough. It's tough. It's foot champs for you. It's tough. But tonight, can we do it? We've got to win six out of four. Six out of four to get ourselves Elite Three. I think so. I think so. If we can play like we did yesterday, I think we can do it. 17 wins, three losses. It's not a bad record for one of the most sweatiest weekend leagues on FIBA 21. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys tomorrow with the last uh, 10 games and possibly some really nice SBCs. I, I want repeatable content so I can spend a little bit of coins and yeah, do some upgrade packs, player picks, and it'd be fun during team of the season. But thanks for watching. Take it easy. Team out. Peace.